Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy okay awesome and we're live welcome to the podcast i've got hi im how you doing yeah good thank you very good good. and we've got good and we've got uh, ali again and both from nietzsche tank so thanks for coming on last time was face to face and now we're doing we're like video different parts of the country it's pretty cool stuff once it works Yes, Good. exactly. <laughs> what have you what have you been up to since we last spoke? Yeah, so we spoke to you around December time. Quite a lot mm. of things have actually happened. It's been really exciting for everyone at Nutri Tank. So we've had the launch of our fantastic new website, which cool. we've been working very hard on. And it's got an amazing set of functions, which Ian can tell you a bit more about because he's the technological one and He poured so much of his time in his final year of medicine uh, into this website, working with the developers. And yeah, he's now Dr. Broadley, so take it away, Doc. Nice. Sure. Yeah. You you graduated like virtually? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, it was quite a surreal experience. Really surreal. Um, How did it it work? The the night before, um, we got an email from the lead to say, oh, by the way, um, if you want to create your own graduation attire, here's some links to some YouTube videos. So um, we graduated in the afternoon two weeks ago on Friday and um, in the morning, I just threw together what I could find. Um, I made a graduation attire, one of the mortarboards and the gown out of um, bin bags, pot, um, cool. pot shoestring. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we had it, had it on the sofa. Uh, with my nice. family and um bin bags were a, quite a theme going through I, you can oh, see everyone right. zoom on zoom they were wearing different things like bin bags and um but it was quite it was quite nice you know everyone was you had your whole did, did you have everyone on the zoom yeah everyone was on zoom so it was on um panel um the um so everyone had their own little video and you could zoom across and you could see everyone on there nice. um all 220 medical students Wow. Um, it was it was really good. And I think the medical school did a great job in um, putting it on and uh, organizing it and putting the effort in. So I think it was it was better than just an email. Um, yeah, that yeah. Some medical schools, I think, have got. Yeah. Oh, OK. Crazy. And are you on the but front line was, now? Um, got the email through to say um, um, starting soon. Yeah. So um, um, Crazy. since. I wasn't able to come on the last podcast with you and Ali, sadly, because I had uh, my medical school finals. Um, Ah. But yeah, and so happy now that, you know, put the effort in and now I'm I'm passed. And so um, I'll be working very soon. Congrats. Crazy. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you're starting in a pandemic. It's probably quite a good good training ground, right? Just getting straight on it. Yeah. (laughs) No, no messing around. Just get us no. straight in there. <laughs> so is it going to be like the traditional, the traditional um, rotations and stuff, or are you just going to get straight into like the front line? I th- it's not a traditional rotation at all. They're they're um, adding us to areas um, in the hospital on the wards where um, maybe there's gap in staffing, and um, because a lot of I think you know foundation doctors um, are moving up a level because you know colleagues are needing to isolate and um they're having to spend a lot of time off work um so there's um so yeah we're moving in from the bottom basically everyone's being moved up one and we're coming nice. in so it'll be it would be a um a limited capacity it won't be the full um we won't have to do everything that a, a normal foundation year doctor does but pretty much everything yeah crazy where are you going to be uh hospital near brighton and I'm okay. I'm really happy about that because I did my first degree um, in uh, Sussex Uni, which is next to Brighton. So oh, okay. I know that Brighton's a cool place to be. So I'm happy Brighton's about cool. being, yeah, being near the sea and um, yeah, it's a cool city. 
Brighton's nice. We've actually just, I just got all my team a subscription to a nice coffee um, called White Clouds Coffee, and they're they're based down in Brighton, which is really nice. Oh, really? I'll check them yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think they were supposed to open a coffee shop or two, and then and then COVID hit. Oh. So they've kind of like pivoted to, to subscription coffee. So they send us a beautiful bag of coffee every month, um, and then it gets sent to all of my team, which is quite cool. That's but nice. anyway, it's a good part of the world. So you, are you going to have to move down there? Yeah. 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 And um, are, they, are they supplying accommodation and all of that stuff? Yeah, they will. They will do. Um, I'll um, I'll check out what it's like. And um, but beggars can't be choosers, so we'll do. Yeah. We'll we'll make what we can of it. Good. And what have NutriTank been up to in response to COVID? Yeah. A so um, we can tell you that we. On our new website, we've got an amazing new COVID section. So um, we launched the website, everything went to plan, and then COVID happened. So we wanted to keep everyone up to date. So we've got a section on our website, which basically outlines everything we've been doing. Um, so we've been working with food brands to um, get uh, snacks and other meals to NHS workers and um we've got them all in a whatsapp group and we're trying to collate as many uh nhs workers together so they can benefit from it and awesome. we've also been trying to unite other healthcare students so we have a huge facebook group now that has like 1.5 mem um 5000 members or something um called healthcare students united against covid-19 and it shows what opportunities, be it volunteering, paid work there is um, for medical students to help out in their local area or around their nice. medical school. And um, we also um, have been commissioned to be in charge of coordinating the nutrition section on the Beat COVID website, which is a junior doctor led website that started at the Royal Free. And so they're picking up material for being NHS workers in areas like nutrition, exercise and fitness, um, mindfulness, because one of the doctors is a mindfulness practitioner, and um, sleep. So we've been getting amazing articles together. I, um, I wrote a survey around food insecurity, um, grocery shopping and panic buying, like we were discussing earlier, yeah, yeah. and um, people's attitudes towards that, as well as um, finding out how people's diets and social eating patterns have changed. So um, that's been circulating around NHS workers and has made um, a good article on the website. And so all other resources are in this um, section, such as Brilliant. like rec recipes and everything like that. So that's yeah. so that so that website is made. It was made by who? The one you're contributing to is that a, 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 um, a so student? It, um, it's a junior doctor-led website. It's made okay. by um, a doctor called James Groves. He's okay. a foundation year one doctor, um, graduated from UCL last year, and he um was very big on mindfulness when he was a student and saw how much it benefited him and he wanted to help his nhs colleagues so he asked us to do the nutrition section and then he's got fitness uh people doing videos online as well like putting up Amazing. yoga and hit yeah. every day yeah nice so specifically targeted you know, like junior doctors who are working in in hospitals and exactly um yeah. so really easy quick recipes um a lot of it right. focusing like of the recipes we we've got like recipe developers that we um are acquainted with to write recipes for us as well as creating our own and it's really focusing on things that are easy to purchase like tinned vegetables frozen veggies um as well as grains and um, long shelf life items, chickpeas, beans. So yeah. yeah. Um, nice. What do they usually eat? They would go down to Mackey D's, I guess, but they're shut. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, so well, shame. That's a yeah. shame, hey? Because I know, you, I know. Yeah. But I know what Uber Eats, I think, were doing 100,000. Yeah. I think they've run out now, but they were doing 100,000 meals up to like 13 quid or something. Um, yeah. Prep. I mean, everyone's kind of doing something, aren't they? Like the restaurants. Delivery, and stuff. delivery today actually pitched in and said, um, 
that they're doing a meal per person in the nhs or something crazy oh, that's like really that. good yeah that's really, really good really good yeah because a lot of them a lot of them on intensive care and stuff are doing like 10 hour shifts or probably more actually 12 hour um, shifts literally. 12 hour what shifts they do, what yeah. they're doing for um i've spoken to yeah. a few friends who are foundation year one and two doctors they're doing three 12 hour shifts um yeah so three days in a row of 12 hours and shifts, four yeah then three days off three days in a row of 12 hours just three days off and that is literally how these people who are working in NHS are functioning at the moment yeah um, it's crazy because you can't really have you can't have a nice fresh salad bar there right <laughs> people are going to cough on it and stuff like that my wife yeah. my wife's my wife's working at the uh at the Homerton in Hackney and it's just like crap um like sandwiches and and stuff like that you know, it's just really bad. I mean, the food's generally pretty bad in hospital anyway, but it's tough. And also, if you've got all the, if you've got all the stuff on, I mean, you've got to go for like a, a chunk of time without eating and drinking as well. I know, it's crazy. Um, it's craft. Like someone delivered some nice drinks to them, um, and guys like you um, are like doing deliveries. So this is cool. Like a lot of people are like the country are pulling together. You know, like companies, yeah. organisations, and stuff. It's great. Um, you know, to get to uh, to get the food and stuff to where it's needed. Um, yeah. But it's crazy times. It's crazy times. How have you got? Where are you getting your food from that you're delivering? So how are you doing our, that? For our conference that we had in March, we had a lot of brands uh, donate items to us and sponsor us. Um, so we had Number One Living Kombucha, who um, was founded by Johnny Wilkinson. Um, yeah okay cool big fan and so yeah. he has kindly agreed um to donate kombucha tins to um the nhs workers we put forward to his team which has been amazing nice. i love a bit like... of kombucha yeah we started <laughs> making some today did you you started we're, making yeah, them today a, we're making some today with my our first batch the first batch i ever oh, made yeah let me wow. know yeah. those I tried yeah, I mine was way too vinegary. Like mine just was too, too acidic. How do you make yeah. it? You, uh, we got sent a pack, um, ah. and um, you've got to do it in a big. It's like almost like brewing beer. It's the same kind of obviously the same process, but like you get a big glass jar, and then it's um you need it's like tea, sugar, um, and then a fermenting liquid. I can't Asian, remember what yeah. it's called. Um, but then you just chuck in all the ingredients and let it work it takes about a week to make it to the first batch and um nice. i think it's a trial trial and error kind of thing you get better at it as you... yeah yeah uh, yeah things yeah. crossed so yours will be ready in about a week i need to make some yeah. of that yeah i'll let you know you need to get you know a scoby See, that's it the scoby. starter kit that's yeah the, the scoby is really yeah, we, interesting we put that in so today it's yeah. like if you imagine it's like a jelly sachet with the bacteria <laughs> culture inside weird. the jelly sachet and then you plant that jelly sachet, the SCOBY, into the sterilized jar. I remember when I made it, you have to make sure everything is so sterile because you want the bacteria mm. to only be able to feast on the sugar that you feed it. Then it oh. eats the sugar and produces carbon dioxide. And that's what makes it fizzy. But mm. it just needs a lot of love and care. So I kind of leave it up to the professionals. It's magic. I, wanna, I need to do that. <laughs> do it it uses the yeast from the air. It yeah. uses natural yeast in the air. Really? In the air. Yeah. You leave it. You can't leave it in a cupboard because um, you have to leave it somewhere where, um, like, there's an airflow because it has to use the yeast, which is naturally in our air anyway, to be able to um, I get started. I thought it had to be Definitely. airtight. Um, it's I remember a, doing it. Okay. I, that like might be really stuff. right or really wrong. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> to. I'm going to Google anyway, that. Well, I think we're going to have to Google yeah, that. Read up on the instructions again, but this sounds like bro science, man. It is. It is we need It's a bit like making school. beer, but yeah, um, a bit healthier. We need to check it out. That's crazy. Um, so you're. So, so yeah, you're. So number one living kombucha has donated yeah. to us. Um, we've had Kate Percy's Energy Bites, which is a lovely like energy ball brand, donate to us. Soho sandwiches, who do really nice like gourmet sandwiches. Um. I can't even remember the others, to be honest. That's great. But, yeah. That's really good. And you're doing it just in, in just in London or? 
London at the moment, yeah. We still need more brands to get on board because some are so yeah. saturated, some are having financial difficulties. It's and tough, yeah. obviously yeah. it is an undertaking to donate um, products for free. We completely get that, but we have to yeah. stick to London at the moment because we've not even tackled nearly enough hospitals yet. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. So you've so since we've spoken last, you kind of um, not pivoted, let's say, but added this extra kind of um, like work, essentially, because you were just you were just educating medical students before, right? And then yeah. and then generate yeah, and then so if you if you kind of expanded out a little bit now to junior doctors and yeah, well, on our website, um, if you have a look at it afterwards, you'll see that we've got three rem uh, membership schemes. So we've got one for the general public, which is forty-five pounds. One for healthcare professionals, which is thirty-five. And one for students. Oh, wait, other way around. Oh, sorry, other way around. So 45, 35. And then one for, sorry, it's late at night. That's <laughs> right. <Sorry. laughs> one for students, which is £20 a year. And so we've got courses on our website, um, awesome. which basically are applicable to the general public. But then we've got more scientific based ones, which um, are more health professional focused. And so our main is to, our main aim is to educate. Um, healthcare professionals and the public on greater nutrition and lifestyle medicine to better their health and obviously their patients' health. And so awesome. we also want them to um, have a good kind of graft on their own self care. So we're working with fitness brands um, to get discounted fitness memberships. So if you sign up to be a member on our website, you'll get uh, discounted hot pot yoga classes, dabs, fitness, and so many other benefits. So we're trying awesome. to basically be like the hub for nutrition, lifestyle, medicine, education, as well as well-being. Yeah. Are you doing any Zoom, Zoom online Zoom yoga classes or fitness classes yeah, or anything like that? Yeah, I am. Um, my best friend's a yoga teacher, so I do her classes every Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom. Nice. Um, it goes really well, to be honest. Um, turn my video off, of course, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ian, are you, doing, are you doing anything that... or exercise-wise? Yeah, yeah. I just... Um, I. I had a just had a yoga session outside on um over zoom which was good um nice and i'm been doing some hit classes um over zoom as well um but uh, just in front of the house is a little garden and you can see the sunset so we've, we've got oh, nice. a little bit of a, a nice setup with um we can do yoga in the sunset so that's quite nice wow. um, that's really cool uh yeah it's, it's good to have little things during your day that you can look forward to and that's, yeah. it's nice to get out. Yeah, 100%. That, I think I'm doing I'm doing more exercise now than <laughs> I was before, I think. That's interesting. I do, yeah, well, I do. I used to do a lot anyway. I'm yeah. basically, before the lockdown, I was doing like four days a week, three, yeah. four days a week. Um, I do CrossFit, which is like weightlifting, gymnastics mm. stuff. And there's a CrossFit gym near, near me, Tufnell Park. And then a little yoga sesh somewhere near work. But now I'm doing every day. That's like really it's cool. awesome. That's really yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Like the really gym, cool. the gym do online classes, so I can basically do them whenever. Because yeah. before I've got like I'm married, I've got some kids, I'm working. So yeah. to go to the gym, like you've got to like go in the morning or go in the evening, and I make time for it. I love it, and my wife does too. But you can only do like a certain number of days, otherwise you never see each other. Whereas now, top out in the garden or even in the living room if you haven't got a garden and yeah. and just go for it. It's pretty cool. I loved your t-shirt challenge. Very impressive. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at it, Matt. Oh, I've got that, more... Uh, is that when you, in, you're doing a hand you'll be able and you to do it. Yeah. Is that when you put a t-shirt on it? Yeah. 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 You'll definitely get okay. into it. You're like a monkey. <laughs> I, I did a handstand. It's a bit embarrassing. I've got more hair on my chest than I do on my head, but as every, anyway, it's good, as every Jewish guy does. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> <saying. laughs> um, and family members is a similar problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry if that wasn't appropriate for the pod. No, 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 <laughs> definitely, it's funny. Um, yeah, Ian, you need to go on it. We want to see. I want to see a little Instagram video handstands yeah get your top on <laughs> a lot a lot I'll of those have been say get on a lot of them a lot of them have been going around my brother-in-law has challenged me to like the quickest 5k so i kind of have you to get well. out and do that 
Uh, depends who you compare me to. I've just done I've just done an off road trail half marathon. Um, actually, near Brighton. Um, uh, it's in Stenning near Lewis. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. Lewis. Um, yeah, yeah, and Stenning. really yeah. Stenning's great, and they do um they do the Stenning Stinger, which is a trail run. They do the marathon and the half marathon, but it's all like mud off road. It's pretty tough. So uh, yeah, I have done a bunch of marathons, but this was just a half. Um, so I yeah, so I run a little bit. I do run a little bit. What day was that? That was that sounds February. Okay. Hold on. That was probably I'm gonna get my diary up. I think that was that was like um was it cold? Begin, uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty chilly. It was pretty chilly. Yeah. It was um um I think it was end of Feb. I can't remember now. End of Feb. oh no, beginning of March, first of March. First of March. Just right. before this all went down. Wow. Yeah. So literally just before, I'll be, yeah. I'll be close, I'll be in that neck of the woods, so I could maybe check it out next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I might still- do you just do all over. Do you run or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now and then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good stuff. I quite like. Um, I quite like a target. You know, like a, mm. like, and I quite like hard stuff. And so, like, the trail running is quite hard, and you just like you switch off from everything else and you just go for it, and it's really mm. cool. So I've been doing quite a lot of that um, over the last like fifteen years or so. Um, but yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. Because mm. I graduated mm. a long time ago. And um Were you at Birmingham? At, I was at Birmingham yeah. Uni. Yeah. yeah, I did chemistry at Birmingham, but I graduated in 2003. So a bit of time ago. Um and yeah, you just like once you start working and you're like doing jobs where whether you sit or you know, you've got to like really mm. keep up with the exercise and nutrition. Because as you get older, it gets harder to stay like to get in shape if you're out of shape yeah um and like food in the offices is like it's always someone's birthday so it's like cakes but it's the same in hospitals like it's, it's always yeah, someone's yeah. birthday with it. it's every yeah. like institution has the same food culture honestly yeah unless yeah. you're at jamie oliver's yeah <laughs> yeah or well, otolenghi i mean if you're working at otolenghi <laughs> that must be cool um in fact there's a there's a great there's a great girl um at my gym um and she's she develops the menus for otolenghi and her instagram yeah 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 oh my god um, what's her instagram no I'm, I'm gonna here you go i'm actually gonna get her on the podcast if you're listening you're coming on my podcast um right otolenghi's my number one he's my number one um and her i guess it's it's uh there you go. it's norish so n double o r I S H B Y N O O R, and her food's awesome. So yeah, That's check so that cool. out. But yeah, so you just got to keep up with the fitness, the health, like the, the good nutrition, the fitness, the sleep, right? Like those two things. Um, yeah, I'm sleeping if you... a lot better um, in the COVID time than I am in ge- than I usually do. How come? Um. I feel like probably <laughs> I'll come. Let me know. I haven't actually I haven't thought why. I haven't thought why. <laughs> you haven't got to get out of the house. Just, just chill out. Less, I think less to worry about. Is, like in my control. Less that things that to rush sense. around for. Yeah, less Kelly. things to rush around for. Yeah. I'm a bit of a rusher. I'm always like on the run doing something or other, and I think I'm just really chilled and at peace so my sleep's quite good (laughs) maybe just needed like a little bit of a like a break just to decompress a little bit (laughs) reset stop all the busyness and (laughs) no covid (laughs) there have been parts of covid on an individual basis but overall i wish it never happened and yeah 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 yeah. no no definitely but But a lot of people a lot of people you spoke about it earlier like um the work from home thing like working from home has been a big thing in mm. um a big thing that's been talked about like all over in the city and stuff i did a talk on working from home like a few days before the lockdown I saw, yeah yeah and now it's like everyone's submersed in working from home and it's really interesting you speak to some people who are like massive advocates and they're like they were like oh yeah i really want to spend more time with my family and my kids and i'm like how's it going and they're like oh like i can't wait to go back to work the kids are a nightmare. Yeah. So it's quite, it's interesting. Like we've had a big submersive experience in work from home and 
yeah, I mean, work's completely going to change now, but um, it will be interesting. You know, I mean, for me, um, I enjoy going to the office. You know, I like I like commuting. It's a good thinking time. I get to listen to a few podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the uh, thing. I think for me, I don't mind this time, but I couldn't do it forever. I quite like having struct external structures in place to allow me to plan things around it. And I always find that, you know, there's saying like, I, I'm not going to say it well because my brain's a bit foggy, but you know, the saying that's like, give a busy person things to do. Well, it's something like, it. yeah, something like that. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Being busy about? for the sake of it or something. No, no, like, as in the busier you are, the more productive you are is what the saying Oh, I see. Right, right. Um, um, what's the saying? Do you know? It was something along those lines. That... Yeah, anyways. Yeah. So I just feel that when I've got external structures in place, I almost do more because, like you said, if I'm dying to read a book or dying to um, listen to a podcast, I will factor it into my day when I've got walking time or a quick lunch break or whatever. Whereas if you've got endless time and endless choice, then I think you become less productive because you've got so much decision fatigue. Like, I could go on a run now, but I also yeah. could go on a run in an hour. And so I've read a lot of blogs and things of people saying that they are finding it way less motivating. But then you hear from people who are exercising more like yourself. So it just depends on the individual, really, I think. But it's interesting. Also depends on your scenario. Like there's a yeah. lot of like, have you seen a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff on Instagram, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, like you've got to use this time to learn something, right? Yeah. Like a lot of, TikTok. there's so many, there's so <laughs> many posts. It's like, learn something. Um, or if you don't learn something, you've wasted your time. Um, yeah, it's huge which is pressure. quite interesting. Huge there's a lot of pressure. Cause like, for, for like, for like me, I'm like, um, I wish I had time to learn something. Yeah, but you have to still stick with your day job. <laughs> like, I've got to work. Well, I've got three jobs <laughs> now. Dad. Well, I had, I had like two jobs, right? I have like running a company and being a dad, but now also got to be a teacher. Um, <gasps> oh, yeah, I forgot that. How's that going? Yeah, home teaching. Well, Nightmare. Nightmare. Science must I mean, be good for you. The chemistry well, degree under your belt. Yeah, I didn't say I was good at science. I just said I did it. <laughs> 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 and that was 2003. Um, but um, the kids don't listen to their parents. Let's be honest. Yeah, you can't. You can't. I mean, honestly, my mum's a Pilates teacher. I didn't do Pilates for years because she was a Pilates teacher. So. Like you just don't. I mean, trying to get a five-year-old to read when they'd rather be running around doing something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's tough. And then obviously my wife. So my most parents, my, a lot of my friends, where both parents are working at home then the general thing is is one works in the morning and one works in the afternoon. So a lot of CEOs I speak to, um, they're expecting their parents to work four hours a day, roughly, something like that. Right. You know, so you just can't do it otherwise. And then for me, because my wife works in hospital, um, then the, the schools will take my kids after Easter. So, because otherwise I can't work at all because I've got to like look after them the whole time. So... Yeah, so it's just like managing that kind of stuff. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, so anyway, back to the learning. I haven't got time to learn anything. I <laughs> got from podcasts, you do that, but you know, like to learn Spanish or I wanted to learn jujitsu before this was shut down. I could do it online, yeah. but like, yeah, you just got to balance it, yeah. take it as it comes. Um, yeah, because you kind of like people, you feel a bit of pressure, you've got all this extra time, you need to use it for something. Yeah. But, you know, people are just, a lot of people are just trying to get by, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and, yeah, a lot of people have got, like, financial or family health issues. So it's just an unnecessary amount of pressure to put on individuals to say, use this time wisely. Um, there's definitely an argument for that. But at the same time, you know, to look after yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good food, exercise and good sleep, right? 
yeah three I, three corner stains i think it's a really fun time to be experimenting with food and like fun dishes because it doesn't really matter if it i mean for me in my case like in the evenings like evenings are very free and like you said you're not going anywhere to, 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 yep. to, to socialize or have dinner so you can make an extra a meal that takes an extra longer an extra period of time that time, you yeah. wouldn't necessarily yep. be able to make on a busy weekday night yeah, yeah. But that's always an excuse. Most people can't be bothered yeah. to make food. It's not even the time. I know. And I was listening to this really interesting podcast that Ian told me to listen to this morning. Um, Sheila did on the food program about delivery services and how dark they're skyrocketing kitchens. at the moment. And dark yeah, kitchens. dark kitchens. Oh, okay. Very, very dark bizarre kitchens. concept. What is it? What is it? So it's a interesting. dark kitchen is basically a kitchen that only works to serve um Class, um, businesses that do food deliveries so um it only works to basically support businesses that don't have existing restaurants with uh customer facing duties because what it basically does it eradicates the contact that the chef has with the kind of social side of having to um give it to the waiter and then the fights and the bickers they have with the waiters sometimes and then the way to giving it to the, um, the uh, customer. So these chefs basically work in these um, kind of warehouse kitchens and they're in very like... Reclaimed spaces. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. Like they're in very strange places. Like the one Sheila did and was in um, was one that was under... It was in Bethnal Green underneath the tube station. So it was very noisy and they literally work for the purpose of producing a high quality meal that can be delivered. Yeah. Amazing. It focuses on the food. But is, then is the, there's, yeah, there's bad sides to it because they're trying to make delivery services so high end and accessible for everyone that there's the argument that some people will stop ha um, like, you know, having kitchen supplies and having anything in their kitchen or having a kitchen at all for that matter. Is that a problem? Okay. What? I love cooking and I think I'd love my kids to learn how to cook. I think it's a really important like mm. mankind skill because it connects your mind, body and soul. And it's the only thing that really connects with the outside environment. Really. I, I yeah. completely, I completely agree, Ali. You know, cooking is so, so important. Having that skill under our belts as humans is, you know, something we should definitely be promoting. And we do that through Nutri Tank, you know, um, getting, um, medical students into schools to teach about um, cooking and also healthy food. Um, and, but going back to cloud kitchens, um, I suppose it's the argument could be said for restaurants, you know, people going to restaurants, they're not cooking themselves. Um, and I guess- I feel like you don't go to a restaurant and then... every single night for every single meal. It's more <laughs> it's the some people, do you know, some people do. It just depends on what your lifestyle's well, like. Yeah, I mean, I, I, guess, you know, I guess this is, you could argue yeah. that the way, maybe this is just a natural follow on from delivery. Now, um, delivery is becoming, you know, it's innovating, it's becoming better. Mm. Um, I mean, the food, they, they create the food um, so that it even cooks to perfection on en route to the customer yeah yeah that's right. how they, that's, they that's the end that's all of it. <laughs> yeah they factor they're not, in they're not messing about no <laughs> no and I, I if it's yeah i think it's do you know what the, the ultimate thing i mean the ideal you want to eat well right like that's the aim right you want to have good yeah. nutrition now i mean some people can cook and enjoy it like you guys i really like cooking too um so does my wife so all of our meals really are cooked. But I mean, there's a lot of people that don't have time or they don't like cooking. Um, and if they can get great nutritious foods delivered to their doorstep, then that's great. Oh, I'm definitely not against Better than that. McDonald's delivery. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't go McDonald's. What's that? McDonald's delivery. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying it's, it's, if it's more accessible, then it's better than... Yeah, if it makes nutritious food yeah, more yeah, accessible, exactly. that's great. <laughs> yeah. But if it increases yeah, fast great. food and, yeah, diabetes and obesity rates, not so much keen on that. No, 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 no. Yeah. that's not cool. Yeah, yeah like not, not fast food, but, like, quality yeah. food. Yeah. But it sounds like... Great. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds like there's more 
there's more yeah. delivery companies that are delivering quality food, which is great. Yeah. I yeah. actually got an amazing, I mean, this is not quality food, but there's a, there's a guy in my area in Islington that delivers cocktails to your doorstep. No way. No way. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. He was like doing a gin brand. I'm going to try and find the photo and hold it up that because we're doing a video fantastic. class. So. so basically, I think he was he was selling a gin brand to, to pubs in, in Islington and obviously like it all kind of shut down. So um, he pivoted. And he does, he makes these cocktails. I think hopefully everyone can see that. Negroni um, and... So I got a Negroni. So N19 pictures. is my postcode. Oh. Um, no one come stalk me, please. N19. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> um, it's like a whiskey-based cocktail. But the guy came, like, drove up and you could get four, <laughs> four glasses of cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. it's amazing you're having, a, you're having a house party lewis i'm just well i was i was actually on house party app I, yeah. um I've with my cocktails things about house parties by the way apparently they can hack you i don't know if that's legit but i mean if they want to listen into my random conversations they are welcome to it's it's free to use house party i haven't got any card details in free. there I I know, it might be rumors yeah, I, I don't know. Rumors. I still use it, but I just thought I'd let. You I think it's Zoom, right. Zoom's, def Zoom's definitely had some issues. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think the some American, issues. one of the American, someone or other, told them to sort themselves out. But they've gone from, they've like their user base has grown exponentially. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're just struggling to keep up. This is Google Hangouts, which is cool. Um, I, I mean, like they're all similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi connections actually... key, but. Yeah, Wi-Fi connection. Without doubt. Everything. Without doubt. Like We're, it's like a basic resource. It's like gas and electricity. You need decent uh, internet connection nowadays. One hundred percent, you do. We we're actually starting our own podcast. I know a member of our team's been contacting you. Yes. About yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so tell me about got, it. What are you going to do? We've gone with Google Hangout actually because we okay. really like it. So that's how we'll be doing it um, as well. Not on not on video though. I don't think maybe. But um, essentially it's a podcast um showcasing uh what neutral tank's done so far in the intro episode and then the other episodes will get speakers in to talk about food nutrition lifestyle medicine and other areas of health so um first up on our podcast i'm doing it on monday um is a dietitian elaine she spoke at our conference and she sits on the medical faculty at brighton and sussex medical school so she actually has a say and import the country. one of two dietitians in the country who do this. So it's actually amazing. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'll sh I'll show you our um our artwork for it. It's pretty cool. We've oh, got you've, oh, you've designed a little cover. That's serious yeah. stuff. No, a nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Not messing about. <laughs> it's good. Podcasting is great. Yeah. Podcasting is great. I mean, interestingly, um, I think in the US, the podcasting listeners have gone down since the lockdown because oh. most most people listen to a podcast on their commute. <gasps> that makes so much sense. Mm. You can use so you listen on a commute to and yeah. from work or you listen when you don't want to speak to your partner. You stick your headphones in and like stick a <laughs> podcast on. Um, so but yeah it's interesting so but i mean we'll you know we'll come out of this soon anyway and but it's a great thing to do podcasting is great yeah. um so you're going to get a bunch of nutritionists yeah but we're also going to open it up to uh, mental health and um we want to get a lot of innovators on the show so we were actually invited to speak at royal society of medicines um innovation um summit last Stumps. march and we met so many incredible healthcare innovators there who are doing like the coolest things around well-being, around mental health. So we want to get them on the show as well because we became friendly with some of them. Get them on. Everyone wants to come on a podcast. It's great fun. I know. It's just it's a great fun to have a chat. Yeah, you should have a little chat. And then with Hangouts, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, yeah. I quite like the face-to-face, -face, like live, because yeah. um, you get a different, slightly different um like chemistry when someone's in front of you but this sure. i mean this is great i mean we've done a three-way four five i mean you can have like um yeah. as many as you want but i mean one two to three is good and you can have a nice yeah. like a nice chat um and you don't have to be in the same room 
and you guys can be in different places and uh yeah that was good. the idea so i've got i'm going to do the first five episodes i've got um the mic in the flat now and then um we're going to order more mics for the team so different team members can host it as well and we can be in different places oh so you've gone geeky on the equipment nice sorry we've you've gone... gone geeky on the equipment oh yeah i did my research did my research <laughs> <laughs> i'm missing my mics i've got these great red mics know. in the office like and like me them and yeah. like and... yeah they're cool um, in fact, I'm actually going to upgrade my camera on my laptop now to like a proper camera to get more video. Because I've done quite a lot of video now since the lockdown. Um, so I'm doing a little video cast series and then everything's released as podcasts as well. Um, it's cool. It's good content. It's good content. Yeah. Um, but this has been the first kind of time that I've done virtual like recordings like this. So... It's pretty good. You can get some really great people from all over the world. I mean, you don't have to limit yeah, it to the UK. Ideal, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool. Awesome. Well, good to chat to you both. Yeah, Next time, face to face, hopefully. Yeah, for sure. That would be, that'd be great. Once all this yeah. is over. Um, predictions on when the lockdown's going to end? Um, like my my grandfather, no way, my grandfather was an 85 year old GP and he said to me on the phone today he's in isolation he's like doing phone calls with his patients and he was like to me his prediction is that in three weeks time offices will start getting youngsters back in because they can and I don't really think that will happen but that was just kind of something he said to me today I don't think it will happen mm -hmm. because They'd have to go on transport. They'd expect the NHS workers on the transport system. So no, I don't think so. I don't know. I literally I, don't know what time is at the moment. What, it's all what do you think, Liz? I reckon, um, well, i hoping, because I don't really know, obviously, but I'm hoping, um, well, schools need to go back first so parents and stuff can go yeah. back to work. So the first thing, schools need to reopen. I reckon they might reopen for the summer half term. So that's oh, kind okay. of towards the okay. end of May. Um, yeah. Then if schools reopen, then people can start going back uh, over like a period of time, right? So we'll have like testing. Um, if you've had it, maybe you go back. They'll probably still have so some degree of social distancing, I guess. Mm. Um, and then when you have um, um, a vaccine, then more will start. And you've definitely got to get t-shirts printed. I'm a survivor or cuddle me, I've had Corona or something like that. Um, Cause I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you can get it again afterwards. Correct me if I'm wrong, but once you've had it, I don't think you can get it again. So I read um, that in Korea, I'm not sure. there were Korea, Korean people were being reinfected. Really? Already had it. Don't I tell me that. Today. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry to burst Hold off getting that t-shirt until we're 90% sure. Yeah. Well, I've heard different stories. We'll see. I'm sure we'll find that out for certain soon. Um, but hey, this is COVID 19. I mean, there's eight, been 18 other COVIDs and they've all gone. <laughs> we just want this one to bite the dust. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. Long answer somewhere between end of May and September. But, but the big problem is, which I think it will probably be earlier, is the economic impact's crazy. Um, and it will cause mm -hmm. a lot of deaths, um, unemployment, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So very difficult decisions the government have to make. I'm happy I don't have to make them. So. I saw the New Zealand Prime Minister. She's so amazing. Um, she's taking like 20% um, cut, payment cut and has commissioned that all other ministers do the same in New Zealand, um, which is so good. That's good. There's also quite yeah. a few. There's quite a few um, big organisations. Their execs have taken pay cuts. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of leaders are behaving really well. Um, Trump's you know. not funding WHO anymore. Oh, I saw that. Uh, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. He wasn't too happy with how they've managed, or what did he say, yeah. mismanage. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Blame it on someone else. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, I think most, well, I mean, most governments or almost all of them have the interests of their people at heart. I mean, people are trying to do the best they can. Yeah. Ultimately. So, well, let's hope we're back soon. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it all do plays it over. Could you get us some N19 cocktails when we come to your shoot? We'll do an N19, <laughs> definitely. We'll do an N19 cocktail. We'll do a little virtual thing. People can tune in. We'll do it live. Definitely. It's true. Cool. All right. Have a good one. Right, good See ya. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.